So you're looking to build yourself an ultimate creator ITX small form factor PC with AMD platform and you're wondering, do you know what's actually the motherboards I'd like to save a little bit of money? Well, this B850i from Asus ROG could be an awesome option for you as a creator or gamer. Now, since the last generation, this has some very interesting improvements. The AI, which I'm usually questioning in this case, actually is very interesting. This makes more sense than ever before. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20 you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key, and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done. Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out hookies.com in the video description below. Now very importantly, don't get confused with the B860 and 850i. The naming has been really confusing uh, with this generation, okay? One is Intel platform, one is AMD platform. They are not intercompatible, okay? They look very, very similar similar but the 60 is not better than the 50 it's just like a b series platforms if you don't know what i mean is amd's got like their top tier platform which is x platform intel has their z platform they are both the higher tier and then the lower tier for some reason on both of them is the b and then just because generations match right now 8 60 or 50 i i means for itx if you're watching this video thinking look i need something more affordable check out the build guides in the video description below especially if you are a creator there's some build guides in there and if you want to reach out and actually have some questions i always get back to my minute messages in the first 24 hours so links in the description below the intel version if you want to check it out i'll leave the link in the description below but we'll take a look at that in another video let's take a look what's underneath we've got a wi-fi antenna which actually we'll have to talk about later We've got another quick latch, two SATA cables. Um, there's a M.2 latch again, different types. This is another screw and a little metal that's for something on the motherboard, not exactly sure. This goes for underneath the M.2 slot if you don't have dual-sided M.2. Another screw and a standoff for your M.2. Some uh, zip ties, ROG keyring, some stickers, and a paper manual. This is really nice. Yeah, just put everything on the first page so you can straight away see, okay, this is that, this is that, this is this. I like it. It's a lot more visual. It makes a lot more sense. I like it. And here's the tiny motherboard. This tiny guy is such a beast. There's something special about these ITX motherboards. So let's take a look at the motherboard connectors then. So we've got the CPU power, which is just single eight pin. Then we've got fan headers. And that's interesting. On the previous generation, we had usually three. So you've got your CPU and AIO and then chassis, basically three. This time there's a bit more. So there is CPU, which is there. Then the second one is AIO pump, which always runs 100% speed, by the way. Then we've got chassis fan and then EF fan, which is just extra airflow, which is still chassis fan, you know, name them differently because, you know, whatever. Anyway, all the difference here is that the AIO pump always runs 100% speed. You can't change that. If you plug it in there, it just, that's what it does. The CPU fan and then the other fan headers, they can be adjusted on bias. Interestingly, they're only one ampere 12 volts, which means that they can go only 12 watts, not 24 watts. So even though there is more fan headers, actual power that you can power through these. So for example, if you've got lots of daisy chain fans or something like that, it's not as powerful as on the previous generation. Then we've got two five volt ARGB headers on the top, 24 pin ATX, USB 2.0 header, two SATA pods here, USB-C front panel connector, which is 10 gigabits in speed, not 20. We've got USB type A front panel header there. That's five gigabits in speed, temperature sensor, just over there. We've got the CPU over voltage header here, which, you know, you can kind of connect either, there's three pins in there right now. There's like the bottom and the middle one connected. You can take the plastic off and then connect the other ones. If you're just doing extra overclocking and need more current to your CPU, then, you know, just that. Then we've got front panel headers 
in on this side and then over here on this kind of daughter board we've got the front panel audio connector right there obviously this is the am5 socket so you can put ryzen 7000 8000 9000 in there 9000 seems to be a killer cpu option there you've got two dim slots these do not support cu dims what's possible on intel's platform this is just u dims ddr5 and supports up to 96 gigabytes then you've got a pci slot in there and that slot is x 16 pci 5.0 and it's got an interesting design how it closes if you put your gpu in there the beautiful intel arc b580 if you plug it in there your gpu is actually locked it doesn't come off so if i pull this it doesn't come off if you screw it in it's going to be there and now you're wondering like how, how can i get it off actually they've designed this very cleverly once you've taken your screw off if you pull your gpu from the kind of chassis side or left side of the gpu if you're looking at the gpu it actually just comes off you can pull it off if you pull it the other way like it will it will never come it will never come off you just have to pull it from this side your gpu comes off so you don't need to press any buttons very cleverly engineered so i like it now there's some vrm cooling on this side and there is an active fan actually there that's blowing down as well. Remember to take the sticker off in there because the airflow will go down and it pushes through, through there and then out from this side and then a little bit on the right side as well. So let's open up this M.2. Okay, here's the heatsink and you've got thermal pad on the top and a little bit on the bottom as well. And it's actually needed because this slot is PCIe. 5.0 to remember the plastic that we had in the box underneath if you have smaller than 80 millimeter ssd in here you'll have to use the plastic because the plastic will slide in this there and then you can actually put a 40 or 30 millimeter one in there the thermal pads aren't like covering all of this but at least you've got some coverage underneath as well and it's a quick latch so you just kind of pop your ssd in there it closes but you still have to screw the heatsink off and you're thinking well it looks like a daughter board what's going on in there there is nothing underneath there's just some cooling underneath but there is a secret slot on the back of the motherboard if you turn the motherboard around the other way you can see that there is another m.2 slot in here and there is no standoffs installed in there and I highly recommend getting an M.2 that has a heatsink on. Even though you might be struggling to fit the heatsink, make sure that it's very, very low profile because you can't fit everything behind the motherboard. You only have like a certain amount of space to play with. So very big M.2 heatsink doesn't go in there. Even though this slot as well is PCIe 5.0 and X4. So both of them PCIe 5.0 slots and they support full bandwidth. There's no switching going on which is pretty powerful. Although I think if you put a VCA 5.0 SSD in there, you might uh, be uh, struggling with overheating the SSD or motherboard or something like that. So probably on the back side of it, I'd put 4.0 SSD. Then looking at the IO of the motherboard, it's uh, pretty plentiful even for the B series of motherboards. HDMI port because the Ryzen CPUs now 7000 and 9000 have an iGPU, which means that you can just use the iGPU to get a picture out or troubleshoot or whatever. Two 2.0 USB type A ports, one of them BIOS ports. So if you're updating the BIOS just on USB, put it in there, click BIOS flashback, voila, there we go. There is USB C two ports. Top one is 10 gigabits in speed, bottom one 20 gigabits in speed, which means that this is the USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 slot and then 10 gigabits in there but the top slot also supports display out even though it being 10 gigabits in speed it's not usb 4 or something like that but interestingly you can get video out through that usb c which for some creators in certain tablets might be very very important then we've got four usb type a ports red which are 10 gigabits in speed 2.5 gigabit lan wi-fi 7 connectors and this time they're new connectors which means that you don't actually need to screw in anything you just pop them in there and you've got your connectors in there no need to screw anymore it's quick attachment which is really really nice then we've got a few other audio things going in there we've got optical out which i thought was lost in a lot of the motherboards mic in line out and line in just a few audio parts there and you've got a flex key there as well which you can configure to do certain things in bios it doesn't have the rog hive that the x variant of this motherboard has but it does still have the flex key if you want to do 
certain things with it. Now, these are just the hardware level things, but actually inside the BIOS and in the software, there's some other things going on that weren't supported previously on the 600 series motherboard. So B600, B650, for example. Number one, there is a quick Wi-Fi antenna or Q, Asus Wi-Fi Q antenna program which basically helps you do certain things with the Wi-Fi because this is Wi-Fi 7, which supports super fast speeds. There's three things it can do. Number one, fast check Wi-Fi, which just kind of checks the signal strength of your Wi-Fi connection. Number two, direction finder. It actually helps you to find the best optimal position of your antenna. So in that program, the program will let you know whether you should have your antenna facing up this way, you know, east, south, northwest kind of orientation and tell you which is the best one for your optimal signal strength, which is really nice. Set it up once and then you always get the best performance. Then you don't have to wonder like, should I put it there or, you know, like doing the old fashioned antennas on your TV. No, none of that anymore. And finally, traffic monitoring there as well, where you can monitor all the traffic. Then in BIOS, there's an update to the Q dashboard, which lets you see actual IO and connectors of your motherboard and then click on them and get the optimal and more simplified DI solution to your connectors. So sometimes you're thinking, okay, I'll plug my thing in there and I'll get the best speed but actually it might not be the most optimal because you might want to swap with another connection that needs more bandwidth and then another one that doesn't need so much. So for example, mouse and keyboard, put them into 2.0 ports instead of the 10 gigabit USB type A ports. It's kind of a waste of space. Then there is AI cooling and cooler score. Asus has kind of built AI into the BIOS and I'm not sure if we can call it AI. It can also be smart features because sometimes AI and smart, you know, now whatever is smart home, smart, you know, smart is just AI now. Because it doesn't have dedicated AI chip inside the BIOS, it's basically just take some information from the sensors and then make some choices what's best for you. And I'm not sure if that is AI, it's just normal things, how things work. You've got a sensor, you measure it, and then you make a choice what's best to, you know, optimal performance, cooling, voltage, current down, up. I don't know if that's AI, you let me know. But ASUS wants to call it AI overclocking. So basically you can, it measures your CPU, what you're doing with it, the temperatures, the current, the voltage and clock speeds, and then it can just optimize it in simplified terms. The other thing is it can do cooling optimization as well. So basically it constantly learns and ASUS recommends the run like a few benchmarks of your first boot so that BIOS actually learns like, okay, how the cooling and temperatures work on the CPU. And then it will give your cooler a score and it will tell you whether it's, you know, kind of good air cooler, best air cooler, or like, okay, air cooler, good air cooler, liquid cooler, or very good AIO. And based on that, it can adjust the cooling and performance, which is really, really nice because that keeps it more efficient. So you don't have to run it more than it needs, for example. So it saves electricity and lets it do it automatically. I don't know why we haven't had that before. Maybe just kind of haven't had the time to do it or couldn't be bothered, but now this is pretty awesome. Then there's AI networking, which is interesting as well, but that only works if you've got an ASUS router or ASUS Wi-Fi mesh kind of a situation going on there. The Wi-Fi 6 can connect through the AI or ASUS AI networking to um, software, it looks and connects you to the most optimal Wi-Fi channel because Wi-Fi 7, it's very important that you get like the good clear channel uh, on the networking and actually it, not just Wi-Fi 7, but it's able to do that if you've got an Asus router set up in your home as well. Kind of some benefits if you're in the ecosystem, if you don't have Asus router, it's just going to give you an IP address and it kind of doesn't work. So in conclusion, is this motherboard worth checking out? Yes, I think this is awesome. And after this, you're thinking, actually, do I really need the X? 870i motherboard like this b offers pretty much everything you need and for most people i think this is a much better option and more affordable option than the x870 so if you want to check it out check it out in the video description below and if you're building on intel platform check that one out and i can't wait to build a pc with this because with the 50 series gpu launch we can get some insane creator pcs built in a small form factor that don't require big things because amd's cooling is very efficient and the 5090 actually fits in small form factor now stay tuned i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section below bye bye